was thinking about was thinking of you as a kid and Mm -hmm. in high school. I'm not talking about college. Hi. (laughs) It's the end of the day. I'm a little bit frazzled, but, but yeah, I need to go to the doctors really bad. Um, I'm not sick, but I need a, like a checkup and I keep pushing it off, pushing it off. And so finally I'm going to do it now. Um, but I'm not going to bring you to the doctors with me. So I will catch you afterwards. All right. So my doctor's appointment was good. And I realized I kind of need like something. If I'm going to be awake and I'm going to go to dinner later, I need some, I need some coffee. So I'm going to stop at Starbucks and get coffee and then I'm going to go home. All right. Hi guys. We're back. I finished my doctor's appointment, got myself a nice drink. And now I can finally talk about what I want to talk about in this video, which is specifically classroom management, more specifically timers, uh, schedule pieces, and how to stay on track. And I know I talk about this stuff all the time in various forms in my videos. But specifically with this video, I thought it would be helpful to put all of the timer schedule stuff together into one cohesive rant basically. So everybody, everybody I think knows that keeping a schedule is really important, especially in a special education room. But for me, it is like the only way that my class even survives. And there are like a bunch of different types of timers that are in my classroom that keep me on track. So I use little individual timers like this. I use them throughout my classroom at each station, um, at my table, at paraprofessionals tables. They're all over the place. My school did provide me with some like this, which was so kind. Eventually they all broke, so I went and bought more from Lakeshore, but I feel like I saw them for like $10 at Walmart, like the little um, kitchen timers, and they work just the same. Another type of timer that I use all the time um, is this almost weird looking app called um, Free Alarm Clock. It almost looks a little sketchy, like should I be downloading this on my computer type of sketchy, so if you don't feel comfortable doing it, please don't. But I love it because you can set your alarms to any time of the day and they will go off every single day. So you can set Monday through Friday. I want the alarm to go off uh, at nine o'clock, at 9.15, at 10, at 10.15. You can even write little like messages. So when it pops up on the screen, it's this white box that pops up and just says, you know, the time. And then it says the little message you wanted to put in it. So for me, if it's uh, 9.30 and my students are supposed to stop their work and start snack. It'll say on that white screen, stop work, start snack, basically. And so um, it'll always go off. And this is great because for me, sometimes um, I might be in a meeting, I might not be in my classroom, maybe I'm sick, uh, or there's a new staff that doesn't really know the routine, but the schedule stays the same because the timer is going off at the same times. I used to have a timer that was really big that was like magnetic to my board, but what ended up happening was I would forget to set it or I would set it but it would be late or if I had a new staff member in the room and they didn't know how much time to give for each activity, it was like such a mess. It was so chaotic. So having that free alarm clock going off at very specific times is like probably one of the most helpful things that has ever happened to my classroom. To go along with that, I know I've also talked about this in a previous video, but having it here makes a lot of sense, which is I use PowerPoint. More specifically, I use like classroom slides. So there are a bunch of amazing sellers that sell these. You can make them yourself if you really want to. But basically, it's a, 
uh, like a slideshow, like a PowerPoint um, that will go through each part of the day and embedded in the PowerPoint are little timers. So if the timer goes off for my class to clean up and move on to social studies, I'll put up the social studies slide um, of the PowerPoint that might talk about which students are going into which group, uh, what we're working on, what the expectations are, and might have visuals of the expectations. And then at the bottom, it has an embedded timer. So once I start, I'll click the timer and it'll start counting down. It's just another visual way for my students to see that uh, we started with 20 minutes and we're going to end with zero minutes and so by the end of zero you're finished. I have found that the embedded timers within the slides are, are really really helpful. I wouldn't say they're as good as just having a built-in alarm clock into the computer or onto your smart board or projected somewhere but the PowerPoint slides are really helpful because I'm able to kind of show and transition from one time of the day to the next and I'm also able to provide visuals built into that slide that can talk about, you know, during this time of day, we might be switching groups or we might be sitting at our desks alone and doing our work independently. Um, it just gives me a lot of freedom to make sure that the students are, are aware of what I'm expecting throughout different times of the day and there's just no confusion and that has really minimized the behaviors for me. My favorite thing in the whole world um, is definitely a good visual, but specifically I think my visual schedules are like my pride and joy. I have shown these so many times in different ways within vlogs and so I felt like showing them here in a specific video would just be really helpful. Some people might know, but at the, the front of my classroom where there's the smart board and everything, there's uh, above everything is, wow, you cannot see my arms. Hi. Um, above everything, there's the schedule pieces. And so it goes through from the beginning of the day to the end of the day, the general schedule of my whole classroom with just images. And they're on this corrugated plastic that um, someone from my school made for me and they're Velcro at the top. Basically, there's one for each part of the day. It's a visual representation of what's going to happen. And then when we're finished with that time of the day, we flip it over and it says all done. And this is not my idea. I don't claim any of this stuff, but this has been so helpful for me. And so my students are aware of you know what, we just finished math, now it's time for snack or whatever. And so we'll kind of almost ceremoniously flip the one over to all done and then move on to our next part of the day. To go along with that, I've shown my visual flip books, I've shown all these in different vlogs, um, but I want to show it here. So this is a schedule like board that I find to be most helpful. And then on the back, I put two strips of the, um, the soft Velcro to keep the extra pieces. But this is one of my students that I am trying to fix because it kind of got a little broken. I brought it home to put more Velcro on it. But basically, I'll put the same pictures that match my large schedule pieces on here. Some of my students can only handle two or three pictures at a time. Some can handle a whole day's worth, uh, but they are the exact match to the pictures that are on my wall. Um, and that has been super helpful so they can see, oh, we just did this, time to move on to this, and they can see it here. The pictures that go onto the red little schedule card are here and I keep them in a jewelry case. You obviously can keep them in whatever method you want, but this has really helped me. So I go throughout the day, it starts with the morning things and ends and um, there are multiple um, copies of the same picture so that if a kid loses one or breaks one of the little pieces, I can give them a new piece. I have things on here like calendar. I'm realizing that I need to make like a lot more of these actually. Um, so I gotta go do that sometime. But just different things, bathroom, all of them. And so I keep them here. And at the beginning of the year, I kind of replenish the whole supply. And then I'm able to put them on the schedules um, for the year, basically. Why is this so important for me? So at my school specifically, we talk a lot about behavior, behavior management, all of that. And the biggest thing that a lot of my coworkers harp on is the fact that a lot of students have a lot of anxiety because they're unsure of what's happening next. And I know that within classrooms, we 
everybody, especially in special ed, you're using first them, you're using, you know, any type of picture exchange, all sorts of things. But I was finding that even using those was one thing, but it wasn't eliminating the anxiety. And I realized that part of that was because I didn't have a cohesive system yet. And I would have a timer, sometimes I would forget a timer. Um, I would be out of the room and someone wouldn't be able to keep up with what I had done for the students before. And I wanted it to be a streamlined process so that no matter what, if I was there or if I wasn't there, they would have uh, the tools and the schedule to stick to. I got a DM the other day that asked me, how many breaks do you give for your students? How often can you let them have a break? And to that I'm like, well, if they're doing some work and they need to take a break, go ahead and take one. Like, I'm not gonna, I might push a little harder if I know they can accomplish more, but why would I be like, forcing a child to do work when clearly they're anxious and dysregulated and they just need a break. So what types of breaks do I offer? My like ultimate favorite break would be for them to be sitting at their seats doing something else, like some other type of brain break. So if they're doing their academic work and they're tired of it to take a break with, you know, play-doh or sand or like some little sensory item or to draw by themselves not related to what I want them to draw but just draw freely something that's structured but isn't too taxing on the brain and I if you walk into my classroom you might find me working with a lot of students and one other kid on the side taking a break you might find a kid taking a break for like a whole hour because they just need that time and then usually they're able to come back to the group and do a whole lot more work and um, I've just never found pushing a kid too far to be beneficial if that makes sense. Wow that was a long rant. I hope that was helpful and thank you for coming around with me for like five seconds before this video took place. If you're looking for these picture cards or the little picture representations 99% of the time the speech language pathologist or the occupational therapist is going to have some sort of um, program that offers these picture exchange cards or um, offers the Mayor Johnson pictures. Yes, you guys are the best. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, bye.